they told me two or three things. One is you'll be among six speakers. And that is frightening enough. And then the energy and the youth of the speakers that are before me really scares me. So I gotta work very hard to get your attention. They also told me that I have only 11 minutes. And I have to tell stories with this. With the stories I have to tell, with the things I have done in my life, I need 11 days. <laughs> so I don't know what to, where to begin and what to tell you about. I started life on the streets of Bombay. I was fortunate enough to have parents that gave me a decent education. I got an engineering degree. But I wanted to be an entrepreneur. First of all, I wanted to break out of lower middle class poverty of India. And you know, this lower middle class poverty is a unique kind of poverty. It's more excruciating than the abject poverty you see at the bottom of the pyramid. Because you can see all those wonderful things there and you can't reach them. You can't get them. You see the cars, but you know you'll never own one in your life. You see the beautiful fridges and TVs and and holidays and everybody else having a great time and you are your hand to mouth. So there was one thing that I knew at that point in time is I did not want to be poor. I wanted to make money. So the first part of my life was all about making money. And I did all sorts of things, anything that I could take a buck and make it into a buck and a half. Maybe two bucks if I could. The thought of failure never even crossed my mind. My first venture of reasonable success and the introducer described me as a successful businessman and a successful entrepreneur. I did a count recently. I've had about five major business successes and I've had 16 failures. The only difference is I tried 21 times. I'm trying to go and try more. I'm not done yet. I don't know how many of those are going to be successful. But there was one thing, especially when I was young, is I had no fear of failure. Failure wasn't even an option. I had nothing to lose. My first major venture was not in this country. I happened to be working in another country, in an Arab, you know, Middle East. A lot of people go there to make a quick buck. I had to find myself there. I found a niche in the market. I needed $60,000 to set up a company. I made a list of the 30 richest people in the country. Got kicked out of 26 offices before somebody took me seriously. I was 22 years old at that time. They thought I was an upstart. Nowadays they call them startups. <laughs> in those days, you were punching above your weight. You were dreaming dreams that you shouldn't dream. An upstart is, was not, it was frowned upon. I'm so glad times have changed, that you're being celebrated. But the success I saw covered up a lot of my financial failures and all my other struggles. Fast forward 15 years, I'm in Bangalore. Now I am reasonably comfortable and I undergo a transformation of sorts. You know that you must have heard this many times over, success to significance. You begin to have a midlife crisis, I was 28 years old with my midlife crisis. Everything happens early for me in life. I wanted to make a difference but I didn't know how. My local parish priest one day called me up and he says, you know, you, you know business and you understand business. This is guy who's talking about some business. I can't understand what he's saying. Can you come and talk to him and help him out? And he needs a little bit of money also. That day, I took 10,000 rupees. In those days, you know, it was a reasonable amount of money. I'm talking about now almost 30 years ago, 25, 28 years ago. Put it in my pocket. And I stepped out of my house and just as I was leaving, I said a prayer. I said, God, this is how I want to spend every day of my life. 
with good intentions in my heart. I lost my it, I hate it when it happens with a punchline. <laughs> this is how I want to spend every day of my life. With good intentions in, in my heart and lots of money in my pocket. <laughs> and my prayers were heard. I've spent every day of my life like that. Ever since. I had an opportunity. I, I had an opportunity that was a once in a lifetime to start a bank. Now remember, I am no banker. I have a God given gift with numbers. Numbers sing to me. They tell me stories. It's actually like a like a symphony I can hear. And of course I can pick out frauds and all of those things in, in a jiffy. I believe it's a gift. I am not I've not done anything to deserve it. So there was this opportunity to start a bank. The financial risk was not, not too severe because it was a community owned bank. But I had to go there and find 2000 people to believe in this dream. That a bank can be created and get them to invest capital. Just 2000 rupees each. But there in light lay the risk. The risk was social risk. Here I was comfortable, spending every day of my life, money in my pocket and good intentions in my heart. But now I had to go out there and expose myself. What if I fail? That was my second encounter with the fear of failure. Now, unlike the time before, when I had nothing to lose, I had something to lose. I had, I had a reputation, I had a goodwill of the community. I had that to lose. When I first announced to a small group of my friends that this is what I intend doing, one of my closest friends took my wife aside and said, Colin shouldn't speak like this in public. People would think he's gone mad. And most people would think you have gone mad because how, how do you start a bank? How many people start banks? I don't know. Maybe they're doing it these days. But 20 years ago, it was very rare. 25 years ago, it was very good. Overcoming that risk, that fear, was very, very important. So friends, what I want to talk to you about, what I want to convince, to leave you with, the one thought, is this thing that we deal with, the fear of failure. And I've been thinking about it, and I believe that it is the kryptonite of the creative mind. It is the kryptonite, it is the cancer of innovation. It is the thing that holds back creative, intelligent people from reaching their full potential. Earlier somebody put up their hand as they are not doing or could not do the thing they most loved doing. Was it fear of failure that held you back? And there is one thing about the fear of failure, that prepare yourself for that. It gets worse. As you get older, it also gets worse. As you get more successful. As you get more successful, you have more to lose. And you know where, what you are losing? It is not material loss that bothers you that much. It is loss of face. How will it look? What will my friends say? Will they think I'm an idiot or I'm a jackass because I failed? You know, you come across a lot of people who, who plan projects and then keep them a secret. They don't want to tell anyone about it. And they say, you know, I'm not telling anyone about it because they'll steal my idea. They're not telling anyone about it because they think that if they don't make it, they look like fools. Fear of failure is the one thing that is going to hold you back. If it hasn't already, it will. And you have to overcome it. Even today, 20 years after I started the bank, when I launch a new project, I am plagued by that. 
there are very there are various ways to deal with it the way i have learned to deal with it is very simple nobody likes loss nobody likes failure but there are two parts of it there is the objective part when you fail you have to start over again which means usually loss of capital and loss of time and then there is the subjective part the subjective part is loss of face loss of reputation how will it look to the world the way i deal with it i only focus on the objective part if i do something and it bombs can i tolerate the financial loss and can i tolerate can i pull back on time if i can do both the subjective loss is completely ignored if you're going to wait around to think of how the world will view you if you have to pivot your business or your enterprise if you have to start over again if you have to put it to rest and say i gave it my best but i'll try again and you're worried about how it will do you're not going to achieve your dream the only way you're going to achieve your dream is to do it no matter what thank you